Hey folks, Tristan from Huge Man is here with another ND Asset Library update. Yeah, that's right, we're still riding the express train to Noodle Town. ND 2.1 has come around quickly with a bunch of new goodies. In this update, you get a pipe generator, a cable generator, procedural pipe fittings, and a new smooth operator. Granted, the pipe generator isn't new per se, but this one has some serious power compared to the original. That includes the ability to use both the built-in circular profile and custom profiles, built-in procedural fittings that follow the pipe's resolution and diameter, perfect fitting setbacks to ensure the final generated geometry is manifold, and the ability to make sure fittings are flush with the end of the edge profile, allowing you to easily snap the pipe ends to other surfaces in your scene. Then we have the cable generator, with the ability to control the strand count, diameter, and amount of twisting, it also includes a bunch of sophisticated path smoothing built in to help you turn your base path into a more realistically weighted cable. And much like the pipe generator, it allows you to use a custom profile and connectors. Then there are a few procedural pipe fittings, a new mesh smoothing operator, and some bug fixes and quality of life updates. That's the quick overview of everything new in ND 2.1. If that's all you came for, feel free to grab it and start playing around, or stick around and we'll go through the changes in more detail next. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to quickly mention is that we've changed the default import method for ND assets from append reuse to append. The reason for this is that append reuse, as the latter part of the name suggests, reuses the data and modifiers present in or on any item you drag in from the asset library panel. This is great for all the modifiers, as it means dragging them in to the scene numerous times doesn't create duplicates. However, it does mean that if you drag an asset with mesh data, change that mesh data in the scene, and then drag it back from the asset library, Blender will automatically reuse the data. Hence, you get a copy of your changed asset, not a fresh copy. This has caused some unintended confusion. By changing the import method to append only and not reuse, all assets imported into the scene become unique copies. But that also has the downside of creating duplicates of the modifiers, but at least your mesh data is unique. Neither option is perfect, and we're stuck waiting for Blender to implement a better option for assets like these. Okay, let's get to the fun stuff. First is the pipe generator. For this to work, you must first define the profile path for the pipe. I'll use this example floor and wall set up here and pick a path for my pipe from the floor to the wall at a 90 degree bend. Now pipes tend to have a bit of curvature as they go around corners, so I'll use the path smooth operator to process this path. With that all set up, let's drag the pipe operator onto this path. Now it's flat shaded by default, so let's chuck on a smooth shade before we continue. Nice, so here's a straightforward pipe model. Let's start by adjusting the diameter and setting the fitting type to simple. Now the neat thing about this is that pipe fittings are entirely procedural, meaning they follow the pipe diameter and its resolution. And that goes for all of the built-in fittings. We've got simple, stepped, and flanged for now. We'll look to add more in later versions. But if you'd like more options, you don't have to wait. The pipe generator supports custom fittings. Let's start by using one of the new procedural fittings, but with some unique characteristics. I'll add a single vertex and move it off to the side. I'll then drop the flanged fitting generator onto it. Now, you'll notice it looks pretty big, but that's intentional. The part of the fitting that the pipe presses into is exactly one meter in diameter. We refer to these as unit-sized fittings. What this means is if we enable custom fittings on the pipe generator, select our custom fitting, and then enable the unit-sized fitting option, it will auto-magically be scaled to match the pipe diameter. Now one thing to note is that the custom fitting won't follow the pipe resolution, because as far as the fitting and pipe are concerned, they don't know how each other's geometry is being created. But there is a neat way around this issue by using drivers. If I right click on the pipe resolution parameter and select copy as new driver, then head over to the custom fitting, right click on its resolution parameter and choose paste driver, 
the two are then connected. You'll see now that changing the pipe resolution also changes the custom fitting resolution. So while we're here, let's play around with some of the other fitting settings. Now keep in mind, for this to be considered a unit sized fitting, the pipe end of the fitting needs to have a diameter of exactly one meter. I work in millimeters, so this says a thousand millimeters, which is the equivalent of one meter for those of you who use freedom units. Basically, don't change this value if you don't want to mess up the automatic scaling of the fitting. However, for the sake of example, let's assume you created this fitting some other way and that the diameter wasn't exactly one meter. In that case, you can always turn off the unit sized fitting option and manually scale it to suit. It's a bit of extra work, but the option is there if you need it. Okay, let's fix up the diameter and just play around with some of the other settings to see what we can create. Neat, here's basically a new type of fitting created by tweaking the parameters of the procedural flange fitting. So a few other things to note, the pipe generator does support custom profiles. So if you don't want a circular pipe, you can change that. For instance, let's remove the fittings and then create a rounded square profile shape. Then enable the custom profile mode and select it. Adjust the scale a bit, and now you've got something even more unique. Maybe this is a cable conduit or steel handrail. Before we continue, if you enjoy using ND and would like to support its continued development, please consider purchasing it from Gumroad, Superhive, or becoming a patron. It's your generous support that helps cover the development costs and time put into ND and all of the content we release here on YouTube. Okay, let's move on to the next item, the cable generator. I'll start by creating a profile under this object, signifying where I want the cable to be generated. Unlike the pipe generator, we don't need to pre-smooth our path because the cable generator uses a more sophisticated method. We can instead just drag the cable operator straight onto the path. And there we have a fundamental twisted cable made up of several strands. You can play with various parameters, such as the diameter, number of strands, or the amount of twist. Now this is flat shaded by default, so let's smooth shade it. Let's take this a bit further. Unlike the pipe, cables don't have built-in connectors, but you can still supply your own custom ones. I'll just use the procedural simple fitting, then hook it up to the cable. The concept of unit sized fittings applies here as well, so I'll enable it. However, unlike the pipe, the cable isn't a perfectly circular profile, making it difficult to match with a connector. We can, however, use the offset parameter to push the cable bundle up and into the connector to make it look a bit more natural. The next step is to make this look even more natural, given that our cable is hanging in the situation. Let's look under the advanced settings and increase the path smoothing iterations. This will result in a more parabolic shape. Depending on the size, length, and shape of your cable profile, this option can cause the ends to point outwards somewhat. Still, we can counteract that by adjusting the path smoothing start factor. That way the cable comes straight out of the connectors before beginning to sweep inwards. Now suppose you don't like the way that this operator is modifying your underlying path. In that case, you can turn off auto path processing. Then it's entirely up to you to manipulate the path before the cable modifier. You want to resample the path with a relatively high value to avoid artifacts created by the twisting. All right, let's take a quick look at the last new asset added, the mesh smooth operator. If I hide the cable generator for now and just focus on the path, we can see the generator in action. I'll add it under the path smooth operator. If I slowly increase the iterations, you see how it smooths out the resulting mesh. The nature of the algorithm means that as the number of iterations increases, all vertices in the mesh move closer together, eventually forming a single dense cluster. Push it too far and you might end up with a black hole. Now we could pin the endpoints in place by using the selection parameter. 
I'll do that by adding the vertex neighbors selected to select all vertices that have more than one neighbor. Man, that was a mouthful. I'll then use that attribute as a selection on the mesh smooth operator. We now have that hanging cable effect. If we turn the cable modifier back on, you'll see the result. The only issue here is that the endpoints point outwards, which is why we execute this process internally, ensuring we account for that and many other edge cases. If you're curious, you can always take a look at what we've done by opening the modifier in the geometry nodes editor. As you can hopefully tell, we've put a load of engineering and thinking into these assets. It's honestly hard to believe our brains haven't turned into pasta after dealing with all these noodles. Well, that's about it for ND 2.1. Hope you enjoy the updates. Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe and consider supporting us if you can. We greatly appreciate it. Peace.